this is the tournament to do it. Yeah. However, Liquid, this is quite an opposition to prove that against, I think. Yeah, I think they're screwed. That's about the extent of Very that. subtle, <laughs> that day. very subtle. But I mean, I see where you're coming from. I see where you're coming from. I'm a man of, fa I'm a man of lots of faith in these guys. So you're going you're gonna to side with Winra? Not necessarily. <laughs> I, think, I, think Liquid have, I think Liquid have the better chance. Called however. your bluff. There we go. How I got caught out. I just got hit by the mix-up. Yeah. But I feel like um, I, I do see there being some rounds. You know, even if it's one round, maybe if it's a round per map, uh, ultimately <sighs> Liquid are likely to take it. But I think Winra, I don't think it's going to be free. I think they have learned in the month I they've think, had. I think it'll be closer than people think because the nature of the clutch strategy means you can never really, you can't consolidate your positional advantage as effectively because that champion always needs to be out and doing things. Um, but still, it, it gives you such leverage in your attacks that you, with the Liquid are never ever going to be shut out effectively. And that is such a strong position to be in. I mean, I remember the times where we would see Nyx get selected all the time and it just here comes an immediate Berserk spree. And Berserk in this game, I just think you're going to see I mean, you, saw, you thought you saw a lot in Duel. Well, think again, here comes Sacrifice. Uh, it's just the ability to do so much damage in a short space of time and just wipe target after target. But you actually see the Soul gets instantly delivered by Team Liquid, and this is going to be a fantastic early start for them. You know, if you're able to sort of drop that Soul off at the very beginning, and then if you do it early enough, of course, now they're going to be able to come together and fight for the power-up. If they can take that, that's a guaranteed 30% at the very least. It's true. Um, and the worrying thing is, it does seem that Winra are going to lose out on both the power-up and the, sacri and oh. the uh, obelisk, and now are all dead, apart from Liss, it seems. Well, he did get a nice amount, Liss. Uh, he's, he's temporarily alive, but I mean, uh, even with that 77 HP, he's, he's always going to be available, but he's going to frag wins. The question is, can he get out alive? You know, this entire time, yes, he's getting frag after frag, but that percentage has only just stopped climbing. Yep. And now he's got quad, but it's almost over. You know, they still need to get back to their own obelisk. We look at how many members of Liquid are starting to close in already. It's going to be easier said than done, for sure. And we can see that Liquid have taken refuge out on the uh, Winra side of the map, which means trying to cap this is going to be extremely dangerous unless he gets a call that it's safe and it's definitely not going to get that call because it's surrounded by the members of Liquid and they're able to cap or retake the sac uh, the, uh, the orb and fly it back their, their side of the map. Now, I think it's actually quite interesting. I, I would have assumed that it would have been the Sawlag going to Bus Driver because it was just the champion who do so much, but no, it's actually not. It's, uh, he's going in with the Slash, so that's an immediate change from what we had obviously Yeah, I was about to mention as well because we see that List is also on the Anarchy and the last time I saw them playing, at least I remember that it was Juvenile playing that. So they have had a, a rethink and adopted a, a new strategy. Bus Driver with a probably the most consistent hit scan on their team and that allows him to get out and do more damage. So. Good change. And of course, Sparty on the Doom Slayer. Like, he, this is one of his main champions in both of the modes. And, you know, as long as we've been seeing Sparty since Doom Slayer's release in Sacrifice, this is pretty much all he's like 100% usage rating. Almost. But that's the important thing is making sure that your team, you're not really, you know, it's not I'm the Anarchy player and you're the Slash player. For different maps, the top teams tend to go with different things. And Liquid are one of those examples where, you know, Slash might go into Rafa's side on one map, on the next to Hang's the one on Slash. And it's, yeah. it's, it's that level of versatility that you need to bring to the table. But just look at it two and a half <laughs> minutes in, 40% down for Liquid, looking very comfortable right now. And this is the problem. The power up is coming in 10 seconds, but you can see the way in which when Liquid gets set, they are so consolidated and Winroll have no real ins because the way in which they're playing is, is quite easy to Whoa. see is that they are moving in ones and twos and it's never it's never that full force as a, as a four, which is always necessary on Lockbox to get in and create that chaos in the base. And you can see the problem. Rafa's sitting up high, free reign of, of, of just railing people away, really. But it's a combination of protection, but also actually surprised he uh, capped that with Rafa, but he missed a couple of crucial shots. Uh, but with the combination of the rail and the rocket and protection, I mean, that's going to be one defender that you, you just can't really take out. And it's Rafa behind the wheel. He's not really going to miss many of those shots. One of the best Quake players in the business with uh, pretty much every tool he wants uh, to defend this point. And it's only just ran out. So just further increasing their lead. Liquid looking super dangerous. 70% versus zero. I mean, ouch. And it's already at the point of panic stations now because they've just got wiped again meaning they're all spawning at the far side of the map. The power-up is not up, and they have 20% to play with, which is not a lot of time, meaning somebody needs to make a hero move and get on that point. But at the same time, the more you start to run out of time, your advance becomes a bit more predictable. And as you mentioned, this map is uh, its very direct in terms of if you want to push the obelisk, you've got to go straight into the belly of the beast. There's no way to sneak around there. And with 8% left, they just have to make the big boy just run in there and do everything they can. But this is Team Liquid. They know that's the situation. They're just going to put up even more of a solid defense than ever because why would they not? 
And they have, and this is liquid on the defense. This isn't even the reason you picked the clutch in the first place. But it also shows and explains why the clutch is so powerful, because at least then you have an opportunity to, to group up, consolidate, and push him with that clutch's ability, giving you a chance at least to take that soul away. I think we only saw it away from Liquid's base once for a maximum of like 10, 15 seconds. Apart from that, it was pretty much a cleanest round you'd find. I mean, that needs to make you worried being on the receiving end when you're in a situation where they have a strategy as a team and they only needed to use like a quarter of it. You know, they've not even had to use their team, essentially their team's full power going into future rounds. But as the soul spawns, this is where the deaths start to matter. If you die at the very beginning with 20 seconds on a soul spawn, not really the end of the world, but it's now, you know, it's right before. You've got to make sure you can make a difference and lifts. That's kind of snuck in there. Quite nice. surprising, really. But it's almost like, I wonder if Liquid don't really mind because they've got the obelisk they won with last time. It's not like they're going to get an unfavorable position. They got there. They've got percentage on the board. They can feel good about themselves now. Definitely. It's better than what they had last time. Of course, being nothing, anything will be a bit better. <laughs> but they start to pile in to hang and the clutch shield. An extra element is uh, very hard indeed to fight away. He's not going to have a hard time getting the power up there because he's got that air dash. He can, anyone can pretty much take that point. No skill required. Um, and it's to hang just, well, I've got the shield, you're going to have to come to me, and if I've got quad, you're dead. This is smart by Spardy. Yep. Knowing right. the opposition has everything on the map, including the power-up, waiting for his team to tell him where's safe, but this time he's Ooh. not spotted, which means he, they now know where he is and he has to move quickly. But he would have wasted around half that um, power-up time, so it's such a common strategy, you know, where if the enemy team has the power-up and we don't really want to take the fight, if we have a lead, let's just hide. You know, they're not going to be able to find us, which ultimately means they can't get the soul. This protection will mean nothing. No matter how many frags they get, they're getting no percentage for their trouble. Yep, it's very true. But he, he still faces the dilemma that his side of the map is contaminated with liquid. And might seem that Liquid are going to get it out just in time, but do they cap it? I mean, like, they, they almost got there. But I suppose with, with how much Liquid have been able to sort of pile in here, they have been able to get a bit of a drop-off. So the lead does continue, you know? Liquid are yet to get a single bit of percentage. And that, that did really come down to how well Sparty was able to play that defensive game. Just sit there and, you know, waste his time 2017. Yeah, he bought out, he bought out nearly a whole minute and uh, let that quad go by. Does the job perfectly, but this is clutch now. Yeah, this is that moment. You know, Waz is trying to make safe passage. It actually looks like there really isn't many people heading him off. Probably could have taken the left-hand side, but he's being a little bit more careful going through the teleport with the rest of the team. They're trying to go for some sort of ambush, but it's not really working out too much. The fight's temporarily working out for them, but nah, can't survive that 2v1, unfortunately. Gets it on, though. That's the most important thing, meaning they are now slowly starting to tick up and challenge that slightly that Liquid had. But essentially, like, the second they drop this off, I feel like the amount of uh, percentage WinRAR were able to build, it's almost like you don't think about it. Because the second they were able to drop things off and defend, that was when the 0 to 100 play yeah. came through. So no matter how much percentage they've given up beforehand, they have done it uncontested before. They can simply do it again. And uh, as long as Waz gets a couple of rockets like that, they'll be in the money. But it looks like temporarily the protection goes into the hands of WinRAR. But look at how weak that Sawlag is. Even with protection, if, I, if he gets a good amount of focus, it's not going to last very long. He does manage to worm his way away. Restack ever so slightly. Let's try to as run back. Well as stealing the soul, which means they will get the cap and slowly tick up once again. Oh wow, Dahang just gets ambushed by Juvenile right there. And of course, this is a substantially better round. You know, a couple of good power-ups on their side is, is one of those contributions, but I think being able to sort of fight for these main objectives against Liquid is going to be quite a challenge, but it's commendable that they're able to sort of like keep up with that because the coordination Liquid have in combination with the clutch is so hard to fight for a power up if Dahang's sitting on that point. The fact they've been able to take a couple is super impressive. They just need to keep it going. Yeah, the key the key for WinRAR is to keep it in this chaotic stage where you don't let Liquid settle. So the clutch is always either weak or out hunting for shards or never able to they're never able to regroup and use that effectively and never able then to recap it and sit back gently uh, if you can keep that chaos up there's no reason why they won't be able to take this round they've done a couple of good adaptations like you actually saw there with the hang i was on the point going for a uh, contest they pretty much completely ignored the hang you know they're like we have to prioritize the person that's carrying the soul yes there's a clutch here yes he's angry he's gonna be doing a lot of damage but at the end of the day we can't let the soul get away um i know it did allow uh the hang to get a couple of just unchallenged rockets he's got a couple of frags but ultimately i think that's the strength of clutch is that you try and ignore him because you go well this guy's got a big shield he's trying to defend let's ignore him he's still going to be pumping rockets out and yep. getting frags on the table like it's so hard to ignore someone that's going to be doing so much damage to you and he just soaks up a lot of damage as well so that's he frees up the pressure on the rest of your team even though he's even that's even when the shield isn't up which is another reason why he's particularly strong because as you say you just can't ignore him 
And he's such a juicy target, you always want to hit it. Yeah, there's a big boy, let's go for the big boy. Yeah, exactly, it's nice and easy. Here, Stats comes, go up. here comes the power up, but it looks very much like Team Liquid are in control. Si wind, yeah, that's just unchallenged quad damage. Yes, please, I'll have that all day. Oh, ambushes, but not able to land a shot, so he took a bit of damage. I think he would have liked to have uh, had that unreturned, I think. It's people got quad damage, not really able to soak up as much. Uh, any damage is going to be nice. bad when there's four people trying to wreck you, but here comes Waz. Nice. And just getting a nice, simple escort into town. And there's the clutch, you know, the eternal bodyguard, really. There's someone with quad. Just trying to get a couple more of those rails, maybe get a frag or two before it runs out. If not, at least we've still got the cap, but yeah, they're coming out in force. But Rafa up behind. That pummel a doing double. work. Hummel really is the unsung hero of Sacrifice. <laughs> wow, I'm surprised to see that one missed. Even yeah. Waz must have been like, what? <laughs> Waz was pretty unhappy with that. Well, they're taking the lead. Well, I wonder if it's for how long. The power-up's going to be gone for a long time, so you know, Winra are going to have to pile in the old-fashioned way. And this is the problem that now it does seem that De Hang has managed to fend off most of the attack, that it has allowed Liquid an, an in to regain this soul and ensure a nice successful defense but in doing so the chaos is still there meaning they might have to just about get on it now but it has they've only just been able to take the soul at least um so you know even if there's loads of like chaos taking place on a point as long as that soul was not being taken the potential climb regardless so it kind of looked like win while we're in a, a lot of control there and they're putting on a lot of pressure but team liquid have quite a nice little 20 percent lead because of just basically how late it took them but here comes rafa trying to head them off oh a nice little flick there juvenile fantastic shot minimal damage in return too comes to hang the one-man army they're trying to gauntlet him but it's just not going to work out and there you go clutch is able to take the soul with the shield up that is such a dangerous tactic yeah that you, that right there is the perfect example of why that tactic is so so powerful because he had four people around him and they did nothing he was able to steal that away and throw it out to his, uh, his teammate meaning even if you don't go in as four you can go in as one you can go in as one and still steal it away, which is just incredible. Now, I feel like Winra, they really had to make a choice right there. You know, the, the power-up was just about to spawn. Ultimately, they chose to go for the power-up, and that's why Bus Driver currently has the protection in hand. Uh, but they pretty much had to concede the soul. You know, do we fight for the soul and essentially allow Liquid to take the power-up and maybe take it back? Or do we fight for the power-up, give up a little bit of percentage, and then try and pile in? Unfortunately, though, you know, now the, the percentage is still going up. Is this the, that's uh, kind of confusing, actually. It is the dilemma in terms of whether you overcommit for a power-up and leave yourself vulnerable or not. And I always oh. think it's it's definitely worth going for that power-up. Because once you get it, if you do get it, then you do have the opportunity to not only... You just have the opportunity to get back your, your soul anyway. So it's definitely the wiser choice, I think. I feel like the percentage you're going to trade off to get the power-up is probably less than the percentage you will gain if you get the soul with yeah. the power-up and then drop it off and then use the remainder of it. But wow, wind coming in with that berserk mode, as we know, but to hang. Trying to stay alive with the shield, still blocking all this damage, but he's, I mean, he only just goes down. That took him forever. All four members of the team were trying to take him out, and they only just did it. But what they managed to do is push him off of the obelisk. That was the key. Definitely. Coming in with Pummel is actually a nice tactic to, because that was the only thing that really goes through the shield, and forcing him back, back, back until he gets off of it, meaning he can't sneak it away. I mean, because at the end of the day, that, that, that's the objective to hang once, you know. Even if he goes down, it's if I can just take the soul, if there's a, a Waz, which we've seen before, lying in wait, and we'll just pass it to him on the high ground, then he just runs off and no one can keep up with him. Even if Clutch goes down there, he's able to pass it and stop the percentage from going up. Yeah, exactly. And try to go for the chase, Juvenile. He's been able to take it back. Plenty of damage or health for the self-damage of that rocket boost. And just look at how far Sawlag can go. And on this map, you see that all the time, you know, full speed ahead. Here comes a Sawlag flying in. Nice. nice. Good shot, actually. With three health as well. Dust does enough. He was able to get a little bit of acid on the floor, but I don't know if that was enough. And Wind's actually very in intelligently using the, the speed boost to that Berserk mode to try and make passage backwards. He is getting chased, though. But to hang, he's had to sort of go for a detour and try and fight for the power-up instead. It's going to be quad damage. Will Juvenile have a chance? No, it gets passed on. Looks like Rafa was able to collect. Now, this might be the round-winning play. Can he chase Liths? Can he finish him? They're doing good, though, Wind Rafa. They're keeping it level. Oh. However, Wins was able to swoop in there and sabotage. Rafa's still alive, 100 health, and he's really taking very little damage. He's going to pile in. Juvenile gets annihilated. 10 out of 10 backflip. And I mean, using the last little bit of quad, probably going to clean this up. Lyft does manage to take it, but he gets one down before. He'll be happy with that trade with just five health remaining, definitely. Just as enough, but still, they do get the cap, and unless Winrock can do something soon, there's not a lot of time left. He had to go for the trade, though. Now, they've piled in. 
They do. They managed to get away. Yeah, that was a really good play. You know, I feel like it's part of the like, They've lost to Hang. It doesn't matter that I've gone down. You guys are still alive. Let's go in there and take it. The Hang's not there to defend. That was a fantastic trade for Sparty. But they still need to get things out. They've dropped it back off, and I don't know. We're getting close to the end of a map here. Don't think they really have any time now. This last person goes down. It oh, there in. we go. Yeah. That's going to be the end of the map. Lockbox goes into the favor of Liquid. Now, that first round was pretty much a wash. There's no getting around that. But they were able to sort of lick their wounds a little bit, come back in in the second, and it was, you know, 75% or so. Yeah. Definitely better. But, of course, uh, you need to still get the round. Almost taking a round is ultimately not getting the round. Indeed. And we saw, we, we talked quite extensively on the panel and here about Winds' mechanical skill, but both Rafa and Waz were just incredible that time. Um, Winrar made an awfully mighty close drive it just in that second round, but at the end of the day, it just was not enough chaos. It's pretty much when they've reached a point where, you know, they're able to almost like, you know, play at a faster speed or just be a little bit more on the ball as a team, which you need to do going up against a team like Liquid. Um, but it felt like, you know, they had a very slow acceleration in the first round and it's, it was almost impossible for them to get going because yeah. Liquid immediately got the soul, immediately got the first power up, and that was it, zero to 100 in the blink of an eye. Now, in the second round, it almost felt like, okay, they almost like woke up a little bit and they were like, right, let's, let's, let's start playing as a team the way we know we can. We, we know WinRAR have been playing super well online, particularly in the qualifiers. They were unbelievably dominant. Sure. When they ultimately lost to Stacked, everyone was saying, well, okay, they lost to Stacked, but they're going to get it next time the qualification happens. But so, I, it would, I definitely would say that Lockbox would be the hardest map for them to win out of everything. It's the map where the clutch strategy does probably work the best. Maybe, maybe Ruins is just as good, but at the same time, it's the map where the coordination shines the most for me because of the nature, as we talked a lot about before the match, how Lockbox is designed, and that does favor more of a TDM orientated style where you can essentially lock it down, ironically. Um, and so moving into what would be Winras pick, it, depending on what it is, I, they're obviously going to have their, their favors. If they can, I just think creating chaos for them is where they're going to shine because that's where they can have their combat and that's what they want to force. They want to force these one-on-one these -on -one fights where they can shine them with their mechanical skill. And if they could do that, there's no reason why they're not going to be able to push it to the limit. Now, it looks like they're going in for a similar lineup. Actually, almost almost uh, a mirror of the same comp. Now, Sawlag being picked on Tempest Shrine makes a lot of sense. It's sure. super, super close quarters. You know, if you're going to try and go from one, one obelisk to another, there's that pretty much death alleyway <laughs> where there's either going to be a light champion with the pummel or there's going to be a Sawlag with a spit ready. Yeah. Um, I know sometimes that's why you'd see people sort of go in with almost like a scale bearer to just say, no, thanks, mate. I want to plow through all this and uh, drop it off anyway. But to be honest, Tempest Shrine, one of the more interesting maps when it comes to sacrifice because it almost you know, it has a, a unique mechanic in that it takes the uh, it takes the soul a uh, significantly longer time to respawn when it gets yeah. off maps, which creates a very interesting team fight. However, we've seen Liquid do exceptional things on this map because of just how well they play Sacrifice and how much they've, they've got their head screwed on when it comes to how to approach this game mode. So the second it goes off map, you know the communication is, right, it's reset, guys, let's yeah. fight for the middle. Let's control the middle of this map, win the fight, our reward will be the soul. And that's it, business as usual. But it also allows you to create equally good chaos in that you can then make these massive melees and get everyone out of position if they have set up. So that option is, is very similar. It's, in terms of picking them up, is a very similar way of picking the clutch. Is that if you can get that steal, you're guaranteed to create a bit of chaos in the map and always have a foothold in, in your offense. So it's a wise pick from them. Um, whether they can go on and win it is a different question. I would still favor Liquid going into it, but maybe, maybe around. I mean, Liquid have been looking unbelievable so far. Now, there were signs of life coming from Winra on that second round of Logbox, but going into Tempest Shrine, our newest map uh, in competitive sacrifice. We'll see if the Winra salesman can pull this one off. I mean, they are against the DreamHack Denver champions. We cannot forget that. These guys have won a major tournament before for good reason. These guys are incredible at the game mode. But here we go. Oh, up behind to hang. See you later, bus driver. <laughs> and maybe Sparty. No. I don't know, they actually died at the same time. I remember the days when you would go for the gauntlet as a direct answer to that berserk mode. But since it, the lock-on was improved, it's a bit harder to just gauntlet him yeah. and uh, deal with the issue immediately. I, lo I like watching this map. There's, there's a lot of action, but it's... Uh... Now, funny enough, it actually looked like the soul was already reset. It's just and Winra are all dead, literally all dead. Which means soul and power up combined. And actually, well, 
That's uh, unfortunate. It, they, they, they pretty much gave up everything, and they're still continuing to die because, of course, now the quad damage is in the favor of Team Liquid. I wonder if we're going to see a repeat of that first round from Lockbox. Could this be another 100 to zero? I don't know. This is a fantastic start, and they did have one on Lockbox as well. I am fearful, actually, because look at Liquid. They are all very healthy, and they're picking off Winrar one by one, which doesn't, doesn't bode well to any type of a coherent attack coming forward. You can see them retreating now, meaning they are communicating at least. And I, I really like the way uh, you're seeing almost like a, a defense going across the outside of this obelisk location. It's not just the guys sitting in this point. It's a matter of even Dahang, he's pretty much just patrolling the outside, trying to pick people off. He was using the last little bit of his quad damage to get as many frags as he could, even though there was no one there. It's this idea that he's patrolling outside, you know, just before they even can get in, they're getting taken out. Yeah. It was a smart play by Juvenile not diving into the obelisk, just staying up top, doing maximum damage to Liquid, but his team just weren't following up, unfortunately, still not paying off. Yeah, it almost looked like they were going to be able to drop this one off. They're trying to defend. Waz, he, as weak as he is, just needed to get one small drop, and they're trying to chase him down. Is he going to get a frag before he inevitably dies? But yeah, eventually, you're only going to last so long in sacrifice. But if they're completely surrounding you, get one or two rockets. That's uh, better than nothing. It is, and they need to buy a little bit of time as well because it's ticked up very fast, and there is 30 seconds until the next power-up. So the idea would be to cap it, get back, and try and pick up that Ooh. protection. Wow. Okay, that was a fantastic shot by Wins. Even I was going to do everything he can. He does get it, though. Yeah, it looks like a temporary 1v1 before... I mean, it's only going to be 1v1 for so long until the rest of people kind of arrive. And now this is... You know, seem to be by some of the community to be a, a more favorable obelisk location. Be the one near the heavy armor, uh, a little bit harder to, uh, not necessarily easier to defend, but harder to get out of if you have the soul in hand. You know, there, there's a lot of like close quarters where you can pretty much get annihilated by a lot of uh, champions. Yep. That's why Soul Lag gets picked so consistently because the area denial is super dangerous. Now Lith's, even though he's got the protection, just look at how weak he is. I mean, he's he's pretty much super vulnerable here. But Waz doing an amazing job. Oh, oh no. over, getting stuck on the ledge, meaning he just jumps over it. <laughs> Overshot it a little bit. Apart from that, it was amazing. It still counts, because you were complimenting him before the error was made. But, I mean, it doesn't really feel like they were able to get a huge amount off that protection. They've got a couple of frags, and of course that's going to be helpful, but it's no. more by the end of it. But oh. as you said, this, this obelisk is is very good for the defense. And you can see that now because... Stuff like that. Exactly. And Liquid are having an extremely difficult time in getting together. Um, and without that clutch as a focal point, it means Winra are looking very comfortable now. Yeah. And I mean, I don't, I don't want to necessarily say Liquid are trickling in. Uh, they're not exactly going in one at a time. But of course, whenever these fights take place, the numbers are favoring them. Waz actually going full speed ahead, trying to go in for the big boy plays. And he actually almost gets a bit of a cheeky double right there. They're going to pile in, try and take the soul away. But... After they've got a couple of frags, at the end of the day, the rest of the team, they're going to spawn a bit closer to your obelisk than you are. Yeah, if that's... they can get a couple of resources and take the fight straight back at you. And wow, he just got off the map, I think. <laughs> yep, that's it, Sparty. That wasn't necessarily a suicide. He flew for miles, blasting off again. I guess that's the only real problem. If there is any problem of killing your enemy, is that then they spawn closer to where you want to go. Um, but still, I mean, they shouldn't have anything to really harm you after that. Yeah, it almost feels like um, half the fight is, is is winning the fight on the obelisk, and then the rest of it uh, is going to be dealing with the inevitable threat you face when you try and drop it off. Of course, they're not going to have as much equipment as you will, but if, you're, if you've taken a bunch of damage and then you're trying to come through and they've got starting shotguns and they're lights and they can get point blank, yeah. it's still going to be a very dangerous combination. Exactly. Particularly on this type of map where you are going Ooh. through those close corridors to try and get to the obelisk more often than not. Um, it is an opportunity for them to just stand there with a pummel or even a shotgun and suddenly you are dead. Now, well, speaking of you are dead, quad damage and it's wins. And just look at how much of the quad he's got left. That could be you know, a huge chunk of the remainder of this round with 20% and a lot of quad remaining. I mean, that's going to be at least 90 before it's ran out. And I don't know if they're going to be able to contest with wins behind the wheel. He's got a super shotgun, heavy machine gun. I mean, he's going to just delete. But no, he's getting focused. But he, I think he's done enough in doing yeah. a significant amount of damage to Juvenile, taking out Liths as well. That looks like it should be enough, particularly since Waz has got the quad. He was able to finish off a couple of other people as well. Oh, oh Sparty was trying to sneak around there, but Waz right behind. And they're going to pile. I mean, they have no choice. They have to pile in full speed ahead, but it's not enough. 100% again will go down to Team Liquid. Textbook second half defense. <laughs> Like a, like a proper sporting game there. When, when they got in control in that second half of the game, it was flawless. Um, taking up great positions around the out, the tops of the uh, obelisk, getting the quad, and that just 
bought enough time to finish it off. And, and that's why it almost feels like, because of, of, of the nature of sacrifice, looking at the percentage difference can, in some ways, almost be irrelevant. You know, you, you don't look at how much percentage difference there is, because if you're a really good team and you can defend from start to finish, it doesn't matter how much they've got. If yeah. you can defend and get one good sequence, you will win the round, regardless of difference. Exactly. And that is the danger of this game mode, in that all you need to is to, to consolidate your advantage for one very, very strong defense and that's it game over now Lith's probably gonna yeah he tries to concede the frag just to make sure look if i go down at least we're gonna get the obelisk that we want but at the same time liquid are they gonna be too fussed because now they're gonna get the subjectively easier obelisk to defend battle for quad here and he just mistimes it but i kind of like a bit of a actually a bit of an exchange there so liquid were able to get the quad regardless even though yeah, the other day lost the 1v1, they piled in seconds afterwards. Liquid have another lead and to hang. I mean, yeah, you have a quad damage, but we've also got one HP, so <laughs> not going to do much there. Doesn't matter, though. Liss is also equally weak and cannot do anything with this remaining of the quad. Only a few seconds to go. Yeah, he's not going to be able to do a huge amount. There's just no one nearby to shoot. There are no enemies to go after. The hang does eventually go down, so that's going to be better than nothing, but... Now, they're going to have to try and take this one back, but with the power-up running out, you know, they're going to have to do it without those resources, but there are all four of them are here. So if they're Same coordinated, time, maybe... Yeah. You can see Liquid all set up in the mid-ground, two of them waiting on the opposition's obelisk, meaning Bus Driver is making a smart move of just backtracking to let his team do a little bit more damage, and hopefully he can find a secure route. I mean, maybe if they, if they can take a fight, of course, I think Liquid will take notice of him missing, but... If there's a big fight taking place in the middle of the map and bus driver, maybe you could try and sort of slip past. But it kind of looks like Liquid have a lot of bases covered. Yeah, actually, look at the, they seem a little bit spread out. And I think it's because they're looking at all the different ways. Bus driver going to the bus right there. That looked like an opening. It's almost like they wanted him to take that route. They <laughs> wanted him to notice that no one was there. So Waz can just get the assassination from behind. That was an integral shot. That was so cute. It was. Pixel. Bus driver's doing everything he can, but whoa, surrounded. It's going well for Winra right now, though. But of course, as we said, winning the fight on the Obelisk, that's only half the battle. It is. And Winra can't even get it back to the Obelisk. So that's a problem, I think, in Sacrifice. Definitely. And on this map in particular. It is so so many roads you can take once you've got the soul in hand. It's just danger alley everywhere you look. And we have seen just the ability that Liquid have to go, well, Let's try and make him feel like they want to go a certain place and we'll just snipe him from behind. But here comes the power-up. The next variable looks like the quad for another time. Rafa with three frags in a row. Now, Winra, they've got quad, but only one of them is alive. But it's going to be Sparty. Sparty has got magnificent aim. Don't need aim when you can punch people. And shoot them with a super shotgun. Or do that. Two great pieces of the puzzle, but... I mean, I don't know. Even though Sparty's had quad this whole time, I, doesn't, I don't really feel like it's done a huge amount. Oh, here comes Waz. Oh, my. <laughs> He's a monster. Yeah, and he was <laughs> quite justly put down right there in a few time. Oh, oh, wow. Sorry, Wins. I mean, wrong place, wrong time, bro. That was a little bit overkill there from Juvenile. At least he exploded. You know, at least it made sense. Oh, dear. Here comes Waz. Sounds like a Berserk's come through. Who is it, though? It's Waz. Look at that. Cleaning up. Two of them. Well, I feel like there's a lot more chaos taking place in the middle. Sparty getting a couple of gauntlets there, but now they have got the lead, but it's... it's you just look at the... I know we said ignore the difference, but against Liquid, they don't really seem to be able to defend for very long. I know they defended for a decent time on the other Obelisk. I know part of that might be the fact that the Obelisk is um, a, a little bit easier, quote-unquote, to defend. Yeah. But against Liquid, who are so unbelievably coordinated, it feels like you're only defending the soul for so long against these guys. Well, they ultimately just take it for free. But they've done it now. They've definitely secured it now. There's only one remaining after they've killed the remaining other three. Very crucial. Defense. He's going to go down, meaning others are going to come in separately. So this could be, this could be a decent defense. And they're trading them backwards and forwards, but the hand getting a couple. Actually, the second they get that double, you know, the second the double kill goes down and it goes to someone mobile or with a nice stack. If these guys respawn and they try and stop you, if you're if you're so fast that by the time they've respawned, you've already gone past, and that was a fantastic defensive nail. I think the defensive nail gun can be sometimes underestimated. Oh, massively, yeah. It, it's, well, it's even in Jewel, it's not used as much as it could be. Yes, it is a bit erratic, but still. I feel I, like in Sacrifice, you almost don't have time to calculate some of the routes you take um, because, you know, you've got to chase or you haven't got enough time. You've got to try and push in for the soul, so you just take a certain road. And if someone's going for a defensive nail, you just run into it. It's almost like they just give up. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll try and survive, maybe not. 
Yeah, no, I agree. And this is it. Like, by the time you realize what's going on, because it's so chaotic at that point in time, it, it just does incredible damage in such a short time frame. But for another time, it's quite rare that we've actually seen the reset come through, but so it's being sort of traded back and forth again. There's this massive group fight, but it comes off in the favor of Team Liquid once more. They're trying to fight their way out. Oh, nice, nice rail. Flip. Very good. Good shot. But this is it. This is again last shot saloon as Winra are dying one by one. I mean, yeah, just look at the kill feed. That's a lot of blue versus red. Yeah. That is slowly coming back in the favor of Winra, but they are also equally low. They really have to get this. The soul now. We're back into danger territory. You know, we're back in a situation where these guys, they've got to make something happen and they can't think about it. They've got to just do it, which means their advances may be a bit more predictable here. They, they can't really mess around. A few seconds down is percentage gone and at 15% left. And that's why I think they've got in for this reset attempt. They're trying to take control again. Let's try and fight for the middle of the map. But no, nope, Wins has it back anyway. Never mind. Good old tens. 10% left, not long. I mean, that's, that's no time at all. That really is no time <laughs> at all. And with Liquid being on match point, this could be the series. And of course, this being a group stage, this will be one of a few fights these Raph. teams will have to take. But this is going to be a great way to start it if you're Liquid. Rafa killed three or four people standing behind the grate there, and no one even realized it for a few seconds. And I feel like part of that just going down was the fact that, look, we have no time, guys. We've yeah. got a pile in them. And Rafa's going to know that. You know, Rafa is going to be more than aware to just sit there and let these guys hang themselves. Unfortunately, that is exactly what they did. It's going to be Team Liquid moving on very dominantly against the Winrar salesman. They made them fight for a couple around it the is. day. But at the same time, they also look vulnerable. Just as 2Z didn't have the cleanest of games, but they won fairly comfortably, Liquid, they were pushed. Yeah, there are a couple of things you think about, you know, is it because these are the first games these guys have played in tournament? Of course, this probably wouldn't be their first bit of Quake they've played today. But on the flip side, you know, are teams starting to catch up a little bit? Is that playing field starting to be somewhat level? Yeah. You know, of course, there are better teams than others, but at the same time, the level of understanding of how to approach each map, how to approach each fight, it's starting to come a little bit more coordinated than it was, you know, a few months ago. Yeah, and this is... A